Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here with an Nvidia Shield tablet and a Google Nexus 9 made by HTC. Now that both of these devices have Lollipop, it is high time we give you a comparison, specifically centered around gaming, or at least that's what we're gonna talk about quite heavily, because they both pack Nvidia's latest processor, the Tegra K1 processor. They do have different variants of the processor though. You have a 32-bit variant with quad cores inside the Shield tablet, a 64-bit variant with dual cores and a Kepler DX1 GPU inside the Nexus 9. But if all that sounds like gobbledygook to you, fret not, we'll be talking about some normal stuff too. While we're on the subject of gaming, we will kick off with accessories and Nvidia Shield controller, pretty cool and this folio case is also pretty cool. These are two accessories that you can pick up for the Shield tab and they're really, really nicely bespoke made for it. The folio case um, doubles up as a kickstand, which for a gaming tablet is incredibly, incredibly important. When you are wirelessly gaming with this thing, what's even better is the fact that the controller completely controls Android as well as just an in-game experience. You've got a back button, a home button, a skip button. This little trackpad area is clickable and it can control your user interface. And you've also got volume controls as well. You've also got rear facing buttons. And what's nice about it, in addition to the fact it charges without a proprietary charger using micro USB, it can transmit audio. So stick your headphones into there and you will get all the audio from your tablet directly to wherever you are with your controller. So they're the accessories. As for the Google Nexus 9, we don't have the accessory, but we do um, know that it comes with, or has availability for a typing case, which is magnetic. And that for a tablet with this aspect ratio should be very, very cool. There's loads of stuff online on that, so you can check that out. We're gonna kick off by telling you about the design now that we've covered peripherals that you can get for it. And the Nexus 9 has an 8.9 inch display with a screen resolution of 15 40, 1536 by 2048. Full HD resolution, eight inches, so smaller screen and lower resolution means you do actually have different PPIs, but not that different. 288 pixels per inch in terms of sharpness by contrast to 283 pixels per inch. The design of the Nexus 9 is superior for the most part. For starters, it's got a completely glass fascia, which makes it feel like a bit more premium, as you can see. The stereo speakers up top and bottom are really nicely nuzzled in there. Right hand side and all around is the really nice metal frame, which feels comfortable. It's not so apparently rich on the black version. On the white version, it looks more kind of chromey and that's, or silvery, brushed metal, and that looks much, much richer. We actually do prefer the white version generally. We'll come on to why in a second. Talking you around the device, so you can see right hand side power button, volume rocker, down at the base micro USB connector, no buttons on the left hand side, up at the top, that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Flip side, and you've got some fingerprints. This is really the main reason we're not massive fans of the black one, because it really does like fingerprints, although it's very comfortable with its soft touch feel, and like we said, if you've got bigger hands, the indentation, on the right hand side just feels very, very comfortable to cup. You've got an eight megapixel rear facing camera right there, as well as a flash. So the Nexus 9, all in all, good tablet, not perfect. There are a couple of slight issues in terms of the finish on this thing, uh, aside from the fingerprints also. There feels like there's almost a gap that we're pressing a little bit between the matte plastic on the back, and you may be able to hear it taps a little bit hollow. Um, so yeah, good, but for a 400, 59 pound device with LTE and 32 gigs on board, we'd maybe expect a little bit more finesse. As for the Nvidia Shield tablet, this definitely has much less finesse, but it comes in at a much more attractive price. You can pick up the 32 gig LTE variant for 299 pounds, so 159 pounds cheaper than that of the Nexus 9. How do they stack up against each other in terms of design? Front facing speakers as well, as you can see, got much more kind of gaudy front facing speakers. You've got a five megapixel front facing camera, which is pretty neat, nice high resolution there. Right hand side volume rocker and a power button as well as a micro SD and that micro SIM card slot. Um, expandability on here, no expandability on the Nexus 9. It's a bit annoying that the micro SIM and micro SD card slots are such a pain to open up um, and they really did end up almost breaking our nail. Uh, but fortunately you'll only have to do that once or so in or twice in the lifetime of the tab if you only really stick one SIM and one SD card in there. Left hand side, you've just got those dock connectors. Right hand side or top even, 
you have a mini HDMI and a micro USB. The mini HDMI makes it perfect for outputting to a TV and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the flip side, less fingerprint loving back, although still matte black generally likes fingerprints a fair bit. Five megapixel rear facing camera, this time with no flash. So all in all, two very, very good devices. This is a thicker one. This is kind of the slightly less attractive of the two. Um, but having said that, it's a lot, a lot cheaper. So we're definitely leaning towards this, especially thanks to the accessories, specifically the kickstand. If for example, you do watch a lot of movies on your tablet, this kickstand folio case is a must because that aspect ratio lens itself perfectly to movies and indeed gaming. Now talking about those screens, full HD versus a 1536 by 2048 aspect ratio. They give you pretty similar PPIs, that's pixels per inch of 283 and 288. If we open up the applications tray, that's really going to be the area that's the most similar between the two, so you'll be able to see the difference. And the sharpness is going to be virtually identical. Being LCD IPS displays, viewing angles are also very, very good on both. The color calibration really is the only real difference, and that is um, on the NVIDIA Shield tablet, a slightly warmer kind of hue than the cooler hue on the HTC made Google Nexus 9. We do prefer the Nexus 9's color calibration, um, we have to say, um, but if you did download a filter, you could probably tweak the HT, the ne NVIDIA Shield tablet's color calibration a fair bit. As for the user interface, it's pretty stock Android, Android 5.0, Lollipop. Um, the only real difference in terms of the experience between the two is the Google Now menu to the left hand side. You've got home screens, you can long press those home screens to um, better control them with wallpapers, widgets, and you can tweak your Google Now settings. You can say, OK Google, and that will open up uh, OK Google command. And if we swipe down, in fact it did that on there, if we swipe down we can see our notifications tray pull down further, you can access quick toggles. What's nice about the notifications tray is that if you activate, activate it from the lock screen, the notifications tray is visible and it's in a lower power saving mode. So you can even expand that notification tray and quick toggles in the lock screen without using quite as much power. The applications tray takes full advantage of material design. So you can see the transitions are really beautiful and you've got that piece of paper, as it were, in the background on, again, both of these devices. We can very quickly thumb through the NVIDIA Shield tablet so you can see we're not pulling your leg, we're not joshing you. This is a virtually identical experience within, save for that lack of Google Now screen to the left. As far as multimedia goes, movies and things like that, this is gonna look much, much better if you ask us. You can see, and you're holding it in portrait, it's gonna be much of a muchness, but as soon as you flip it out, and that is where the Nexus 9 falls short because you've got slight black borders on the top of the Nvidia Shield tablet, but you have some pretty major black borders on the top of the Nexus 9. So we can whack that That's open. Like the phone to get to the you can day. see the black borders are virtually equidistant top, bottom, left and right. So it just feels way, way more bezel heavy than it actually is. Like we said earlier though, for reading, you definitely are gonna get a better experience with the Nexus 9. If we open up, for example, a PDF with a standardized uh, book inside, you've got some pretty crazy black borders up top and bottom on the Nvidia Shield tablet, whereas the Nexus 9 looks stupendous. Whacking that open, like we said, full page, to each screen. As far as audio goes, the stereo speakers are gonna be very comparable. We do prefer the stereo speaker sound on the Nexus 9. And gaming, gaming really is where it's at. If you're playing a game that's optimized for the Shield controller, then the Shield tablet will win every single time, largely because you don't have on-screen controls. We do prefer gaming on-screen controlled uh, games with the Nexus 9. The aspect ratio of the screen just means you have more game going on up top, and the controls take up a smaller amount of space, what feels like a smaller amount of space on the bottom left and bottom right hand sides. Performance across both when you are gaming is really, really stupendous. If we were to open up a couple of benchmarks, for example, we can whack open Antutu and we'll get that opened up on the Nvidia Shield tablet as well. And you can very, very clearly see 54,802 and we can open up uh, 
bar chart so you can see how that stacks up against other devices. It wipes the floor with everything else out there, even the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 with its um, Qualcomm Snapdragon 805 processor clocked at 2.7 gigs. Do you know what else wipes the floor with all of those devices? This, the Nvidia Shield tablet, despite coming in at a lot less money, it packs a 53,532 score. Again, ranking that above all other devices except for the Nexus 9. So um, really, really nice to see Nvidia's uh, tablets, uh, sorry, chipsets even working so well, despite the differences in the GPUs. Interestingly, they do have different GPUs and everyone knows that the Kepler DX1 GPU is the daddy of all GPUs. But when we ran a couple of graphic centric benchmarks such as GFX Bench, interestingly, like we said, the Nvidia Shield tablet actually won out. Manhattan for anyone who knows a benchmark in full HD 1920 as in 1920 full HD 1870 um, 30.2 frames per second 31 frames per second and generally across the board in uh, this benchmark the Nvidia Shield tablet won out over the Nexus 9. Opening up base mark 2 we can very clearly see the Nexus 9 wins out against the Nvidia Shield tablet 1510 versus 12 59, where the Nvidia Shield tablet wins out is in its system, but where the Nexus 9 wins out really is in terms of graphics. So that is testament to the Kepler DX1 GPU in there. The 64-bit architecture won't really be put through its paces anytime soon, given uh, the type of games out there and the fact that everyone's still making games and accommodating 32-bit devices. So if you are tossing up between the two, we don't think that should be a major factor. We definitely think you should opt for the um, Nvidia Shield tablet if you watch a lot of movies and if you really like the idea of really, really solid controller input. Also, if you like your money, because you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck from this thing. If you really love reading on the go, for example, and you like a more refined user experience and you prefer um, HTC's build quality on a slightly larger display, then the Nexus 9 will probably be the one for you. It'll also probably be a lot better for productivity too. Just wrapping up the specs, two gig of RAM in uh, the both devices. Like we said, you can pick this up with LTE for around 459 pounds Pick the, and 32 gig internal memory. Pick this up with LTE for around 299 pounds and obviously 32 gig internal as well. If you have enjoyed the video, click that like button. If you like VTech in general, click subscribe. If we've got any questions that we didn't answer, fire them in the comment section below and we will do our very best to do so. Thanks for watching VTech.